Good afternoon, Buenas tardes. I'm Sadir Hanish from the Cornea Service at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia. I would like to thank Professor Liu and the Planning Committee for inviting me to give this talk on update on Boston Keratoprosthesis Type 1. I have no financial interest in the subject matter of this presentation. Historically, for those of us who started doing keratoprosthesis surgery three decades ago, we didn't have much of a roadmap to follow for performing this procedure and anticipating difficulties postoperatively. But at this point, many chapters have been published, as well as several hundred articles in the peer-reviewed literature. This is a patient with lattice dystrophy who's had three corneal transplants, all of which had failed, and the question is what to do next. Do we repeat a transplant with a fourth graft whose success rate is probably nil at one year, or consider an alternative? What is the likelihood of subsequent graft survival versus keratoprosthesis? What would the visual rehabilitation be with a graft versus a keratoprosthesis? Would systemic immunosuppression be required if we do a fourth graft versus keratoprosthesis? And does age matter in deciding on whether to offer the patient another graft versus keratoprosthesis? The patient underwent a Boston keratoprosthesis and re regained his macular potential of 20 slash 40 and has retained it for 12 years. The indications for keratoprosthesis are divided into those with good prognosis, such as bullet keratopathy, dystrophies and ectasias, trauma, limbal stem cell deficiency, especially in the setting of a wet eye and multiple graft failures. Of course, inflammatory etiologies have a guarded pro prognosis. Examples are Stevens-Johnson, cicatricial pemphigoid, and chemical burns. The contraindications for permanent keratoprosthesis are, of course, eyes with no retinal or optic nerve potential. The advantages of, of a permanent keratoprosthesis include a relatively rapid visual rehabilitation, and it offers a chance of sight and otherwise hopeless uh, eyes. The disadvantages, it requires a different skill set and knowledge and avoidance of complications. The most common complications are the development of a retroprosthetic membrane and glaucoma. The Boston keratoprosthesis has historically involved a front plate, which includes an optical element, and it comes in an aphakic and a pseudophakic variety, and a back plate made of titanium or polymethyl methacrylate. Some models include a titanium ring, others don't. This is an animation of the assembly of a Boston keratoprosthesis. Donor tissue is three fine to 8.5 or 8.75 millimeters. A central three millimeter trephination is performed. The front plate with the optical element is assembled in front of the donor carrier tissue the back plate on the posterior surface of the carrier tissue, and it's secured in place with a titanium ring. Attention is then given to the recipient eye, and a trephination is performed, usually at 8 or 8.25 millimeters, and the keratoprosthesis corneal tissue carrier is brought over the field and sutured into position, usually with 16 interrupted tenonylon sutures, followed by a therapeutic bandage contact lens. Postoperatively, these patients can be followed with imaging techniques. The upper slide shows anterior segment OCT, revealing the keratoprosthesis, the posterior chamber implant. The anterior chamber is easily visualized with the anterior chamber angle, the titanium ring, on the posterior surface of the prosthesis. While the bottom slide shows a glaucoma tube shunt in the retroirrital space. This is with ultrasound biomicroscopy. Design modifications have been implemented over the past few years 
to decrease the incidence of complications and to decrease the, the cost of producing this carrot prosthesis to make it more available in the developing world. Actually, the cost has been reduced to two-thirds the previous cost uh, of the Boston carrot prosthesis. Many attempts at decreasing complications have included the use of biologics, carrier cross-linking, this is of the carrier donor tissue, drug-eluting contact lenses to prevent infection, and biointegration of the carrot prosthesis with the recipient cornea. The latest model of the Boston carrier prosthesis is the Lucia Capro. It has a titanium backplate of 7.8 millimeters with radial fenestrations to simulate the human iris and allow pro proper nutrition of the um, uh, carrier donor cornea. The optical element is a PMMA optic and the posterior or backplate is made of titanium and clicks on the posterior surface of the cornea. This is a patient upper slide left who had graft failure and after multiple grafts it was decided to offer him a Boston Capro. He did well for a while. You can see the multiple laser capsulotomies or correction of laser membranectomies for the retroprosthetic membrane. Uh, after which a dense retroprosthetic membrane developed and it was not possible to perform laser capsulotomies anymore. B-scan ultrasonography showed a dense cyclic membrane uh, behind the retroprosthetic membrane. A decision, a decision was made to replace this with a Lucia carotid prosthesis. The tissue was brought over the punch block, a central 3 millimeter um, Trephination was performed in the cornea scleral tissue, and then the prosthesis was assembled around the donor tissue, the front plate including the optical element, was placed on the anterior surface of the donor tissue, the titanium ring, in this case blue, was placed on the posterior surface, and it was clicked into position. An 8.75 millimeter tree fine was then used to punch the donor cornea. Which was removed. The prosthesis and the donor corneal tissue was perfectly aligned. A Hesburgh bearing tree fine was then used to perform an 8.0 millimeter trephination. To about 90% depth, the anterior chamber was entered with a super sharp blade and corneal scissors were used to remove the failed graft slash carotid prosthesis complex. You can see the titanium backplate there. And lo and behold, there's a dense membrane, a cyclic membrane at the level of the iris. This was also removed. An open sky vitrectomy is performed and the keraprosthesis corneal donor tissue complex is then sutured into position with 12 interrupted 90 nylon sutures. A bandage contact lens is placed over the front plate and the procedure is terminated. Slide upper left reveals the failed graft bottom left the first character prosthesis post laser membranectomy and slide right shows the lucia character prosthesis in good position again regaining macular potential of note 
for the first time in the history of the curve prosthesis, more capers are being performed outside the United States than in the United States. Many articles have been published over the years on this topic, and these can provide a nice roadmap to help the surgeon who decides to incorporate this procedure in the care of their patients. There are more than 500 articles published thus far and many texts, including Dr. Cortina and Dr. De La Cruz's text on keratoprostheses and artificial corneas from Springer. Many of us have written chapters in this text. Professor Liu has embarked on a very ambitious uh, text, which should be available late this year or early next year, together with um, Drs. Avaranam and Zare Gavanati, uh, hopefully covering all aspects of keratoprosthesis surgery, um, both um, mechanical and um, the osteoadonto keratoprosthesis. In conclusion, many of the historical concerns, surgical demands, costs, complications are being successfully addressed. Careful patient selection and surgical planning remain very essential in the success of this procedure. As always, long-term follow-up is necessary. I would like to thank you all for your attention, and I'm prepared to take any questions at this time.